Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to go over how you can analyze your Qualtrics data in the results tab of your survey. Now, let's say you've gone ahead, created your survey, sent it out, got some responses, and now you're at the critical stage of analyzing what those responses actually mean. There are two places you can go about doing this. In your survey, you'll see two tabs, the results tab and then the reports tab. This results tab automatically creates a general template and a general report for you that should contain the critical information based on the question types you use in the survey. While the reports tab is a lot more customizable and will be something we'll go over in a follow-up video to this one, where we'll dive in depth into the reports tab and what you can do with it. But heading to the results tab first, Something we always recommend, well first let's actually head to the survey. So in the survey we'll see two different type of questions. One open text here, another open text there, and a multiple choice question in the middle. Now with these type of questions usually certain type of data is looked for and searched for in a report. Now for the what's your name question, usually a table works just fine. We recommend using a table so that someone can go through, if they're looking for specific names, filter them down or highlight a specific name within a report or something like that. Similarly, a table might work for question three, but as it relates to comments, we always suggest using something like a word cloud widget where we can see like common trends or common things that pop up in multiple comments as people do fill in their response. And then Q2, multiple choice questions, often work really, really well with visualizations like bar charts, pie charts, breakdown bars, things like that so that you can see the split between the different groups as they selected among these options in this question. Now heading to the results tab itself, we'll see this different breakdown or these different breakdowns of how the data is set up so that it's the most visually appealing and informative to stakeholders. Now, as I mentioned here, with questions that are set up in a textual manner where someone types in their name or types in a comment, a table is the best method for doing this. Similarly, a bar chart, in this case, they use a horizontal bar chart, displays multiple choice questions very well, as at a glance, someone can see, okay, so things are going pretty well where someone is likely to stay at the company for another year. While there are a couple that are very unlikely and unlikely, the vast majority are choosing either unsure or above. So that's good news for a stakeholder who wants to look at this and get information at a glance. And then this adds some numbers to this where if someone's looking for the exact proportions in each category, they can find that in this type of table as well. And then here you can calculate averages, means, mins, modes, things like that. And then finally, in these last two widgets, once again, it shows this one just shows a count of who answered. This one shows a table of the comments. And then this one shows the reasoning for those specific comments. Now, if you want to make edits to this report so that you can configure it in the exact way you're looking for, here's how you're gonna go about doing that. If you click Edit Dashboard, you can add specific widgets to this to sort of structure it in the way you want. Or if you go up here to the top left corner, you can add a blank page and then build your page from scratch. Now with this specific question type, here's how I'd go about analyzing and reporting the data. So first starting with the name, what I'd do is I just create a simple table widget in here that just has the names. Rather, whoops, not a table widget, a record table widget. So record table widget that just has the different names. So then I'm going to look for a name in here. And now I get a list of all the names for all the people who answered the survey. And then for the multiple choice question, I'm going to add two different widgets that show me two different things. So the first type of widget I'm going to add is a pie chart. 
metric count. And then the dimension, do you plan on working here for one year or more? And then this shows me the breakdown for each of the different categories people selected from within that multiple choice question. And then what I'm going to do is change the display a little bit so I can show the values, see the breakdown and the count at the exact same time. For stakeholders who want to see this information at a glance, this is really, really helpful for them to just get that information instantly so that they can action it in whichever way they'd like to. And then I'm going to shrink this guy down a little bit. I'm gonna add a second widget, this vertical bars. Same idea for the count with the x-axis being, do you plan on working here? And I'm gonna change display one more time, data values, show the data values, so that each of these guys, once again, are shown on a vertical bar with the exact same information displayed in the pie chart, but if someone is looking for a more bar chart representation of the data, they have that as well. And then finally, if I were to analyze this particular data and present it as a report, the comments for the third question in here, what I would do is I would set up a word cloud to get the most common comments that are asked or rather submitted in the survey. So then one last widget I would add is a word cloud widget. Where are you? Perfect. I'll choose three, why or why not? And then you can see the exact comments or the exact words people are using most within that particular response. And this is very useful, especially like, let's say this data was flipped. Instead of people being very likely to stay, they were very unlikely. Looking at this word cloud will help you figure out right away why people aren't staying or why they aren't doing a particular action. So in this case, the words I seem to see the most are hybrid, commute, balance, grad, school, model, job. So these are likely going to fall into the likely category where people are going, this job is great to help me balance both grad school and working, or I like the commute, I like the hybrid model, I like the industry, this is a great opportunity. This word cloud will help you pick out specific words that you can sort of focus in on to make actionable changes from this data. And then once you do that, for these particular set of questions, you should be good to go. But in general, doing a recap of the results tab, here's what you need to keep in mind. If you add a page from a template, or if you just hop into the results tab for the first time, you'll get a default report created for you where it'll match a widget to the optimal version. It'll match the optimal widget to the specific question you're asking. So if you're asking an open text question, it'll give you something like a record table or a table widget. If you're asking a question that's more numerical in design, it'll give you a statistics table or some sort of bar chart. And then if you're asking a question that's like a matrix table, you might get something more like this or a statistics table somewhere here. But if you want to make sort of your own custom page, what you can do is either on the page they created for you, you can add a widget, then add those custom widgets that you want to see, something like a pie chart, a breakdown bar, something like that, maybe like a word cloud, or you can create a new page and then build all your widgets in here. Hope that clarifies things. This part of the platform is a little bit tricky to work with. So please feel free to reach out if you have additional questions or concerns or want to go over anything in particular. Always happy to clarify anything and help further with us. Have an amazing rest of your day and I look forward to seeing you again soon in the next video. Take care.